What's happening everybody, welcome back. I'm just here in the studio. So it's September now, it's spring finally, and I'm getting a little bit restless waiting for wedding season to come around. Check out our cool pink backdrop in the studio here, by the way. I know most of you guys on this channel follow me for the photography and not the wedding planning advice. So if you're a photographer, feel free to skip this video. Otherwise, let's get into it. I made a video quite a few years ago now going over some of the Auckland wedding venues that I've been to. That list has changed and it seems like it was really helpful to you guys. So I'm gonna make another list and I'm gonna do one every year for the wedding venues I've been to that season. So here we go. So we'll start this year off with uh, the Glass House in Morningside, which is a really great venue. Um, it looks amazing. I mean, you guys can see from the photos what it's like, but yeah, I really like it. The staff are really friendly and it's just a really cool place to be, especially if you want some cool kind of city photos at Sunset or um, Western Springs is really close by, which is a great place to get photos in as well. But yeah, the Glass House in Morningside is one of my favorites. These are in no particular order, by the way. I'm just going over all the venues I've been to this past season. So the next one on my list would be the Nocton Woolshed. That's a really cool, like rustic looking barn vibe with a nice overlook over the ocean. Um, again, really nice staff. It is more of a DIY venue, so you'll bring in like a wedding planner or bring in your own decorations and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a really cool place and uh, it has a really nice outlook over the ocean. So really like Nocton Woolshed. Now you can't really talk about Auckland wedding venues without talking about Markovina Vineyard Estate which is one of my favorites. I've been there a whole bunch of times and I've just never had a problem. The staff are amazing. It's a really great place if you want to do all your bridal party photos on site. You definitely don't have to leave for photos if you don't want to. Many locations for the ceremony spots, great food, great indoor wet weather option. Markovina, I can see why they're so busy because they just kind of have everything all in one and they do a really good job every time. The other thing I really like about Markovina is they are really good at like updating and, and keeping the venue fresh. They've just built this new outdoor area which I don't have any photos of because they only just finished it last week I think. And uh, yeah, I'm really stoked to be there. I've got a wedding there in a couple of weeks so I'll show you guys some photos on my Instagram if you want to follow that down below. But Markovina, definitely on the list. Got some blue sky coming over finally. Hopefully the weather starts to get better soon. The next one is a really interesting one and I've only shot one wedding there ever, but it's called the Sapphire Room. I shot Laura Giddy's wedding there. She's a celebrant, really great celebrant as well. If you wanna check her out, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but it's just a really nice, cool looking place if you wanna have a more intimate, small wedding. Um, they didn't have the reception there, but uh, for a ceremony, and I'm pretty sure you can have the reception there, uh, it's really great. And they, it does kind of double in size if you book both parts of it um, but I think it's pretty affordable as well and it just looks great so the sapphire rooms are a pretty cool new one in Ponsonby. The next one on the list is Castaways. Now Castaways is like right down the bottom of South Auckland uh, right on the edge of Auckland really down by Waiuku and it's right on the beach it has a bunch of accommodation like a whole, it's more like a resort so it has a restaurant a whole bunch of uh, different separate rooms and things like that where people can stay and your guests can stay. Uh, the rooms could do with a little bit of updating, but the venue's nice. And where the ceremony's held, it's looking out over the water. There's also beach access. Even if you have a two-wheel drive car, most of the time you can get down on the beach because it's just really hard, compact sand. Uh, you want to be a little bit careful, but you can get down there and get some cool photos down there. And there's all sorts of spots for like, there's like a little secret waterfall down there. I've photographed that before. But yeah, Castaways, another one for South Auckland. Next one I wanted to mention is Bridgewater Estate, which has been through some updates recently. Um, I really like that place. Uh, the new forest ceremony spot is great. I think I actually did the first wedding there once they'd finished that new ceremony spot. But yeah, the couple that run Bridgewater are really, really nice. Um, always a pleasure to deal with. And again, I've never had any issues with them. They have lots of ceremony spots available to choose from. Um, they have a really cool like summer cocktail hour area where you can hang out in the sun and cut your cake or do whatever you want down there, do some speeches. And then they have the nice reception area up by the swimming pool at the top. But yeah, Bridgewater out in Kaukapakapa is a really cool one. So check them out in the description as well. Alali Estate is another one that's in Kumu. It's kind of right at the start of Kumu, just when you come in by that roundabout. So you don't have to go through all that Kumu traffic when you're on your way to your wedding. Uh, but I would class it as like a garden, villa kind of venue. Uh, but the good thing about it is they have a really large reception space in 
like a permanent marquee. They have lots of gardens and different areas where you can have ceremony spots and like cool lighting in the trees and things like that. And it's also really close to Riverhead Forest if you want to get some photos out in the forest. Next we've got the Country House Farm and it pretty much lives up to its name. It does have a real Country House farm feel to it. Uh, they have a big barn where they do the reception and then there's like the cool house where they have a room that you can get ready in I believe, uh, at least the boys did when I was there. And yeah, it's just a really rad place. They have like a big hill up the back where you can go and get photos at sunset. Nice big lawns, a little bit of a lake area. And again, the staff are really nice. The people that own it, I uh, think it's just a couple that own the place and they're really lovely. So if you're looking for more of a barn type feel, like a rustic barn type feel, check out the Country House Farm. Next on the list, I've got Hunua Falls Camp. I've only been to this venue once, but it was really cool. Where the ceremony spot is, it's kind of in this foresty area with this nice little river following behind it. A fairy tale type foresty ceremony spot and yeah, it's really great. And then they have this kind of school hall vibe, I guess the camp vibe, uh, for the reception area. So it's real DIY, you're going to have to bring everything in, but if you want a more low-key, more intimate wedding, Hunua Falls Camp is really great and I would assume it's not that expensive. I could be wrong, but Hunua Falls Camp is another great one. Next we've got the Riverhead Boathouse. I've been to this venue a bunch of times as well. Also one that's close to Riverhead Forest obviously. Um, they have a nice river flowing behind it and the reception hall is really great. Uh, it looks awesome and yeah, they've got the big lawn where you can have the ceremony in front of the big old tree there. And a good thing about all these venues in Riverhead is there's a lot of Airbnbs all around the place. If you need to find somewhere to stay for your guest or maybe if you're coming out of town, there's a lot of places to stay around the area. It has a real nice summer feeling to it. We can't really talk about an Auckland wedding venue list without talking about the French Bay Yacht Club. They grew up out in Titerangi in the area. So yeah, I've been there a lot. It's another kind of really affordable one. I think if you do it from Monday to Thursday, it's like sub $2,000 to hire the venue. Uh, which is great. That's a good tip, by the way. Looking at different weekdays and uh, a lot of venues or vendors will have different pricing if it's like Monday to Thursday, because weekends in our industry is like really Thursday to Sunday. <laughs> French Bay Yacht Club is great. It's right on the beach. It's a yacht club. It's an actual yacht club, not it's not just a name. Uh, and you can have your ceremony right on the water, on the deck there, uh, as you can see in these photos. The one thing is, I guess it's still kind of public, so if you're not cool with like people wandering around, that could be a problem. But all the weddings I've been to, it's never been an issue, and people are always respectful uh, and kind of stay back and be quiet, generally. Uh, but it's cool having that energy where the boats are kind of wandering around in the background. You've got the beach right there, you've got Tadarangi Village, which is great for photos. One time we had a really wet weather wedding there and we couldn't find anywhere to get photos, so we went up to Tadarangi Village and got some bridal party photos of them just hanging out and having a drink and something to eat and the little food mall thing they have up there, which is really cool as well. The inside is really great. It has kind of 70s, 80s vibe to it. Uh, big windows all the way along the front, so when the tide comes up, it just looks great and guests can like hang out on the deck outside. And yeah, being such an affordable venue, I think it's a really great option, so yeah. Next on the list is one I've only been to a couple of times, which is Everybody's in the City. Um, if you want a really kind of different feeling venue, um, definitely check out Everybody's. It's a bar and you have kind of access to the top level where you can do like your speeches and things like that. And then they also have the downstairs area where you can do your ceremony. Um, but yeah, Everybody's is a really cool place. It's right just off Queen Street in the city. So I'd suggest staying in like a hotel or something nearby or telling your guests to like Uber in. I'm sure they probably would anyway. But yeah, it's kind of like a restaurant, modern warehouse with like plants everywhere and they have like a little outdoor courtyard. I mean, the city photos you can get are great at sunset. We went for a little walk down to the waterfront on Queen's Wharf and yeah, we had a really great time last time I was there. So everybody's in the city. Next, and like I said, in no particular order, we've got Kumu Valley Estate, um, a good old classic. Um, dealt with Annette who owns the place a lot and she's been really great to me and yeah, been really great to all my couples. But Kumu Valley Estate is a really nice, kind of more rustic feeling venue as well. 
Um, they do have a few different spots for ceremonies, like they've got the little forest location down the back, and then they also have the kind of main area with the big trees in the background, which looks really great. It's another great one if you have a more intimate wedding, but I'm pretty sure they can cater to quite a few people as well once they kind of open the doors up and things like that. But yeah, Kumi Valley Estate is another great one. Now, I was gonna talk about some venues over on Waiheke Island, but I think I'm gonna make uh, a different video just for Waiheke Island venues because there's a whole bunch over there and whether you class it as Auckland or not is up to you. It obviously is Auckland but you know you have to catch the ferry and it's a little bit different so I'm going to make a separate video on just Waiheke Island venues. Another one I went to recently was Tabula Rasa right down the bottom of South Auckland. Really great place, um, really friendly owners again that's kind of a common theme with all these ones. Tabula Rasa is a really great place, really friendly people, really great ceremony option area and they have a cool outdoor like cocktail hour area, big swimming pool in the back that you can hang out at. And then they have a cool like outdoor first dance area with like a fireplace and fairy lights and everything. Really nice driveway area and a lot of cool photo spots so you don't have to leave either if you feel like you want to stay on site for photos. Tabula Rasa is definitely one of those. So that's pretty much it for this list guys. There was a few other venues that I'd been to um, but they were on the other list as well so I don't want to make this video too long. If you have any questions about other venues or anything you want to know about wedding planning, just drop a comment below and I'll answer you as soon as I can. So see you in the next one.